Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at franchise accounting. What is franchise accounting? Well, franchise accounting is when we have a franchisee and a franchisor. Who is a franchisee and who is the franchisor? Let's think about this individual. This individual is an entrepreneur. They would like to start their own business. That's one option. So rather than starting their own business and taking risk by starting a business that no one knows about, no one, it's not a recognized name, what an entrepreneur can do, they can contact a franchisor, like for example, McDonald's, that's a common one, or Subway, or Five Guys Burgers and Fries, or Dunkin' Donuts, and what they can do, or Burger King, and what they can do, and they will open a business under those franchises. What is the benefit of this? Well, these businesses, whether it's Burger King, Dunkin' Donuts, or Domino's Pizza, they've been in business for so long. So they have a, pro a proving system that you could use to make a profit. So that's the reason why you will buy a franchise rather than starting your own business. So we're going to be doing accounting for the franchisor, for the businesses. What are the revenue for the franchisor? Well, the franchisor will have two sources of revenues. They will have the initial franchise fee and related assets or services. Simply put, what that means is when you start, when you sign a contract with them, you have to pay a price, and that price could include buying assets or services, but the most important is giving you the right to use their name, so to operate under their name. So you cannot just put up a McDonald's sign, you have to pay them a fee you, to use the trade name or other intellectual property of the franchisor. Sometimes they help you with initial advertising as part of the fee to set, to set up your accounting information system, to train your employees, to help purchasing and purchasing equipment, signs, fixtures, so on and so forth. That's one source of revenue for the franchisor. The other source of revenue is the continuous commission or royalty fees based on the operation of the franchise. So after you open your door and you start to selling burgers, pizza, coffee, whatever you are selling, the franchisor would like to have a fee of that as well. That's that's called a continuous commission. And what, what what's the justification for this? Well, they're going to help you with promotion and marketing the business, hiring and training employees maybe. So although they might do this at the beginning, train your employees, they also might do that continuously. So it all depends how the contract is written between the franchisee and the franchisor. And different franchise franchisors they have different agreements supplying you with inventory and inventory management like when you see mcdonald's truck on the road they're basically supplying their franchisor with fries meat hamburger buns so on and so forth they might help you with accounting and bookkeeping services and what's going to happen is this they're going to recognize the revenue based on the performance obligation so what's going to happen is this and we have to be very careful in revenue for franchisor because we have to read the contract we have to read the detail and based on that based on the details what is the obligation of the franchisor if they meet their obligation they would recognize the revenue now some franchisor they don't provide any service beyond the initial franchise fee stage so once they set you up you say you're on your own we're done under those circumstances they can recognize the whole franchise fee up front other agreement, what's going to happen is when you pay that fee up front, the franchisor will be involved in your business for a period of time. When that's the case, they cannot recognize the revenue up front. In this, in this session, we will assume that once you, once the franchisor help you open your business, then that's it. Their involvement is finished, basically. Okay? Now, the best way to illustrate this concept is to look at an actual example. But before we do so, I would like to remind you, whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I am a useful addition to your CPA review course. Whether you are a student or a CPA candidate, I can help you do better on your exam, CPA exam, performance during your courses by providing you with lectures, multiple choice, true, false exercises. This is a partial list of my accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your backer, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. I also provide you with 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions in their original format plus detailed solution. If you have not, not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation, like this recording, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. I also started a group me 
for my CPA candidate. The, the group is called CPA Exam Support Group. If you haven't joined, please join us. So to discuss CPA exam issues and meet other CPA candidate. So let's take a look at this example to see how it works. Five Guys and Fries enters into a franchise agreement on December 31st, 20X1, given Adam Corporation the right to operate a franchise of Five Guys and Fries, FGF. And the period is five years. Five Guys and Fries charges Adam an initial franchise fee of $60,000, the right to operate the business as a franchise. Of this amount, so they're gonna charge Adam 60,000, immediately 30,000 to be paid immediately and as soon as we sign the agreement this is what we mean immediately and the note which is the 30,000 remaining Adam will pay in five installments so you're gonna pay $30,000 today then you're gonna pay 6,000 6,000 6,000 6,000 and another 6,000 so this is how it end up to be 60,000 together now we know from the time value of money that when you have a series of payment, you have to find the present value of the payment. So you have to record the payment at present value. This is your obligation. So if we do discount the payment, if we find the present value, we're going to assume an 8% interest that if Adam wants to go to the bank, they will, they will charge them 5% for this loan. So 5,000 times the present value annuity factor of 4.7914, the present value of this obligation is 23,957. So although you'll be paying 30,000 in total, the difference between 30,000 and 23,957, the difference, it's going to be a discount, which is the amount of the interest revenue. So just make a note of this. We're going to see this later. Now, as part of this arrangement, and once we see as part of this arrangement, you have to read now very carefully because this is how we're going to be separating the separate performance obligation. Five Guys and Fries help locate the site, negotiate the lease. Maybe they have a good experience negotiating the leases because they do this on a regular basis. Purchase the site, supervise the instruction, construction, and provide employee training and equipment as necessary to be, to be a distributor of its product. Now, bear in mind that training services and equipment are sold separately. What does that mean? Well, it means that the... Everything that they do for us, except training and equipment, in everything else, what I mean by this, negotiating the lease, purchasing the site, supervising the, the construction, and prov are separate obligation, and training and equipment are also a separate obligation. So the other help is basically part of the initial fee, but training and equipment are sold separately. So we have to account for them separately. So they have to... They have to perform their obligation before we recognize the revenue for training and equipment. They, they cannot recognize the revenue until they meet those obligations. Also, part of the agreement, Adam is to pay a 2% royalty payment on its annual sales on January 10th of the following year. So the, the year ends December 31st. Adam will have to determine what's their total sales. Then 10, year, 10 days later, we'll have to pay five guys and fries the amount of royalty, which is 2% of sales. So let's kind of break down the performance obligation of the franchisor, Five Guys and Fries. Well, right to trade name, operating the business, and business know-how for, for five years are, are not individually distinct. So everything that we talked about here, except training and equipment, everything else prior to this is part of the, part of the initial fee. When do they meet this initial fee? When do they satisfy this initial fee? When the restaurant is open? We're going to assume the restaurant will open on February 5th. And after February, after February 5th, the franchisor will have no more involvements in the process. So once we open the business, the franchisor involvement is technically done. Okay. Also, we have training services as a separate obligation. And when is that satisfied? When the training is provided, we're going to assume that's going to be done in the month of January, because we're going to be opening the store February 5th. And the equipment is the third obligation. When is that satisfied? When they deliver the equipment, we're also going to be assuming it's going to be delivered in January. So here's how we're going to break down the $60,000. Remember, we have a $60,000 contract of, what, of which $30,000 is to be paid immediately in cash. And this $30,000 is for, for all the obligation except the training and the equipment. 
So the 30,000 right to trade name, market area, and proprietary know-how. Then the remaining of the money, which is the remaining 30,000, remember this 30,000 will be will be paid will be made in payment, and we already computed the present value to be 23,957. This amount, 23,957, we're gonna allocate, and just I'm gonna told I'm gonna tell you this now in case you're saying where is this number coming from? I just told you that the training services are worth 9,957, and the equipment which was which were installed by January 15th are worth 14,000. Together, they're worth 23,957. So if we add them all up, the total transaction price is 53,957. But we said, when we looked at this, when we started this contract, when we started discussing this contract, it was for 60,000. So what, what's the difference? Well, if we take 60,000 minus 53,957, the difference is 6,043. And that's the discount on the note. The discount on the note, it means the interest revenue that the franchisor is going to earn, interest revenue. Because although we're gonna be making five payments of this amount, of this five $6,000 payment, 6,043 will be interest revenue. And the other amount is for the training services and the equipment. Now, so let's go ahead and journalize the entry on the day that we sign this deal. And we're gonna sign this deal December 31st, 20X1. On this date, the franchisor would receive 30,000 and they will have a note receivable of 30,000. Remember this 30,000 is six payments times, uh, no, five, five payments times $6,000 each, which will amount to 60,000. We debit cash, we debit notes payable. We said that the notes receivable, the discount, which is the difference between the note and the notes receivable is 6,043, which is a, which is future interest revenue, the discount. We have unearned franchise revenue of 30,000. Remember the initial 30,000 is for the unearned franchise revenue. And when do we, when do we, when do we earn this? When we, when we, when we, when they open the store, it means our obligation is done. We can recognize it as revenue. We have unearned service revenue for training. 9957 and when do we recognize this revenue when we provide the training we have unearned sales revenue for the equipment which is worth 14000 so this is the entry that we make on when the agreement was signed on December 31st 20x1 now let's let's fast forward till February 5th which is a month later the store is opened so this is the entry that we made on December 31st now the store is open now we're going to start to recognize the revenue well, we can recognize this 30,000 of revenue, this un, unearned franchise revenue on February 5th, the store is open. We would reduce unearned service revenue and we'll increase revenue by 30,000. Also remember that the training was completed by the end of January. Now we are ready to recognize the training revenue. Now it doesn't have to happen. I just, I'm assuming that the training happened. Maybe the training did not happen till March and we'll, we'll have to wait till March to recognize the revenue, but we're gonna assume it happened by the end of by the end of by the end of January they trained their employee they trained our employees Adams employee which it makes sense because Adams employee need to run the business therefore they need to be trained before the store open also they they delivered the equipment for Adams business on January 15th so they will again they would, they got rid of the unearned revenue for training they got rid of the unearned revenue for the sale for the equipment they will debit unearned revenue credit revenue notice here they are recognizing the revenue and also their cost for the equipment is 10,000. They will debit cost of goods sold and they will credit inventory. So this is the entry that we make on February 5th when the when the business open. And if it, it, it looks like they earned all the revenue because they delivered all their separate performances. Now it doesn't have to happen all February 5th, including the initial franchise fee. As I just mentioned earlier, we're gonna assume in this example that once they once the store is open, the franchisor, fries, five guys and fries, they're done with their obligation. They, they no longer have to service Adam from this point going forward, unless they have a new agreement, of course, but they have no obligation going forward. Now, during 20X1, Adam total sales was 750,000. That's the total sales. Now what's gonna happen? Most likely the franchisor will have will have access to your accounting information system. Their fee is 2%, their commission is 2%. They're gonna book account receivable 750,000 times 2%. They will credit franchise revenue of 15,000. This is part of the continuous 
commission the continuous royalty then Adam will have to make the first payment of six thousand dollar remember Adam owes them five payments of six thousand dollar the franchisor will debit cash six thousand credit notes receivable six thousand now remember part of this note is interest they're going to have to compute the interest and the interest happens to be 1917 they would reduce the note and they will increase interest revenue now how did we come up with interest revenue you have to know this the note receivable has a face value of 30000 minus the discount of 6043 so the book value of the note is 23957 what we do is we'll take the carrying value of the note times 8% and the interest for year 1 is 1917 you now you different color what color we can't see that that's okay let me use the let, let me use the orange okay wait actually i want the purple okay so, we've never used purple no problem so twenty three thousand nine fifty seven times eight percent that's going to be the interest for year one now bear in mind you might be asked to compute the interest for year two for year two, notes receivable is still thirty thousand. However, the discount the discount initially was six thousand and forty three. Well, the purple is nice, Adam. Minus the discount, the discount is one thousand nine hundred and seventeen. So what's left in discount is four thousand one hundred and twenty six. Therefore, the book value of year two note is twenty five thousand eight seventy four times eight percent. So the interest revenue in year two is two thousand and seventy. Two thousand and seventy. In case you are being asked what's the interest revenue for year two but yeah you, you need to be familiar with how you, how you compute interest revenue from when we talked about you know notes receivable i'm sure you are comfortable with that what should you do now at the end of this recording i'm going to remind you to go to farhatlectures.com and work mcq's multiple choice questions to reinforce these concepts your education is important invest in yourself invest in your career invest in your education study hard good luck and of course stay safe